Well, Ian, first of all, I've got to say it is a, it is an honour to talk to you, and it is such an amazing thing we are talking about. Movember. I don't I don't see you with one. This is me, like a couple of days, three or four days growth. I think the challenge for me would be even growing one in a whole month. But you know, what's your moustache game like? No, I miss the boat, uh, John. My uh, my game will be good twenty. Uh, 22. I think I need a bit of a lead in time for it. But then I'm not sure about your um, marital status, but I also have to you know, put it through um, some pretty robust admin in my house. Yeah. I don't know if I'd pass muster. <laughs> no, I, I feel the same way. It's a, it's a strong look, a moustache, and certainly not something that a lot of people can pull off. So yeah, this will be the, the one and done for me. But look, this is an amazing thing that we're we're talking about. And it is just that word talking, right? And I think that as New Zealand men, sometimes it can be a challenging thing for us to do. Before we kind of get into why you think that is, I really want to talk to you about mindset. And, you know, this, this project that I'm working on with the, the wonderful support of AIA Vitality is looking at the things that we can all do to just take back a little bit of control. I, what I'd love to know, Ian, is what were the things that were sort of said to you, whether it be in the dressing room or on the field, that really helped shape your mindset as a sportsman? You got an opening question, Dom, and it's, uh, it's a really important one as well. I'll start for the mindset, which I actually live and breathe today, which I lived and breathed during my rugby career as well, which was positive, really. I believe in regardless of the situation you think you find yourselves in or how you think you're feeling at that time. Everyone has a choice, right? To either have a great day or a bad day. To be negative, to be positive. And um, some of us go up and down uh, with different stresses of life, but we always have a choice. And my choice was always to go, right, it's going to be a great day, going to make the most of any situation. And something like this, chatting to you and chatting like you're talking about, has been something that I've been very excited about. So a real positive mindset and something to look forward to. Back to when I was um, a rugby player and kind of uh, focused on that part of my life, my mindset was once more very positive, provided I'd done the work leading into a game. If I thought I'd done all the scouting, what I had to do for the opposition, trained well, uh, fully backed the people around me, certainly backed my own skills. And when you're six foot six and a string bean, uh, Dom, you got to kind of back yourself or, or no one would. Um, provided I had all of those kind of boxes ticked, I went in really positive and knew I could dominate. If any of those factors, in my opinion, hadn't been achieved during the week or the, the couple of weeks build up to a test, I went in underprepared, a little bit stressed, very anxious, and often didn't have a great test match. So visualisation for me then and now was always very important. What's going to happen? What's the scenario? What if it doesn't go to plan? What's my exit? What's my other strategy? You know, I know it's going to hurt if I'm going to do a race. Okay, I get to the race. It starts to hurt. It's actually not a problem, Dom, because you're already mm. prepared for it and already ready for it. So those little details of preparation were really important to me when I was a rugby player, but equally Today, just living life as a, as a father, a husband, um, and what I do day to day are really important to me now. Preparation to me, planning, structure are key. I think it's, it's, it's hard sometimes because people sit there and they go, oh, yeah, but I'm not a sportsman or a sportswoman. Like, how can I put this into my own life? And I think there's, a, there's an amazing book that I recently read called uh, Atomic Habits by a guy, a guy called James Clare. And he said, every decision you make is a vote for the kind of person that you want to be. And it's not about only eating salads and exercising all day. You, you know, you've got to have a beer with your friends and, and, and live life. But it's just trying to make some good votes along the way. And, you know, one story that sort of, you know, came to me as you were speaking was you know, a few years ago, I went on a trip with my dad and, and, and a couple of his best mates. And you know, one of them's quite philosophical and he was sort of saying, listen, you know, life's like a book, you know, and every day you're responsible as the author to write a page in your book. And then we had four days of playing golf and fishing and sort of hanging out together. And at the end, this guy shook my hand and said, look, four pretty good pages. And, and I like to think of that mindset and sort of say, every day I'm just trying to put down as best pages I can. And when I get up in the morning and I take some control back by exercising or eating good food, you know, it's just getting myself off to a good start, like you're running a race and it's, it's getting myself off to a good page. And I think 
sometimes we can put our heads in the sand as men and just go, oh, she'll be right. But now as someone who's 44 and I'm not getting any younger and I, I have this sense now with a, with a new partner and, and wanting to have kids and wanting to live a long life, not a, not a lifespan, a health span. And that becomes you know, really important to actually put some intention on uh, the things that we can control, which are going to the doctors, which are knowing that we probably shouldn't you know, be drinking every night or trying to get out and move, doing some movement. And what's right for me is not right for you and mm. is not right for you know, everyone out there watching. But it's about finding the things, the small steps that you can take to, to get a bit of control back, especially during this time. This last two years is probably the hardest thing for people has been that lack of control you know the just uncertainty and so yeah I mean I'm, I've encouraged my dad and you know the, the the older blokes and you know in their mid-60s in my life to just be getting to the doctors just because you want to live a long life you want to have a great health span um, but it still is something that we as Kiwi men find difficult and I, I wonder over the last two years do you think that's got better or worse Ian from your opinion? I think it's got better personally, John, because opportunities just like this, people like you and me, others, of course, talking, and that once more getting back to the, the statement you made at the start, just talking. And, and my story may not resonate with everyone, John, but having the opportunity to talk to you and talk about my story and my views on perseverance, structure, mental health, physical health, how they all intertwine may resonate with some people out there and when we have this broad base of people like you and me and others talking it just broadens the scope of who we may reach and uh, if my story if my views on uh, mental health and physical health and how they all intertwine touches someone and makes a difference to someone well that's a great thing so there are a lot of people now talking about it men are very good as you know Dom, of talking about physical health. We talk about going for a run. We talk about going to the gym. We talk about you know, how fit, how strong, how prepared we are. Now that conversation has to include the mental health side of our physical health. Because for me, they absolutely intertwine. Um, mm. I can't talk a lot of about the mental health battles I've had uh, personally, because I think they've always been... Um, I, overshadowed by my physical health, which has always been paramount to me. It's been an absolute priority. And when I prioritize my physical health, I know I'm looking after my mental health. Um, so hopefully that story there can resonate with some people. But um, getting back to your story and, and about the pages, life to me and my, for me personally is so much about structure. But when I have structure in my life, uh, I have direction and life's good. If you start with a plan, and it goes pear-shaped, well, you just adapt the plan. Um, and, and that, to me, is really important. Uh, there was a time in my life when I finished playing rugby, um, thought I was going to lead this wonderful, normal life. You know, I've been a professional rugby player for many, many years, always got told when to be at a spot, what to wear, and what to do. And uh, towards the end of my professional career, I started longing for this normal life, whatever that was. Um, and for six months post me finishing rugby, I tried to lead this normal life, didn't run, didn't exercise. And i got to say, it was the worst time of my life. Absolutely, you know, mentally and physically. All these aches and pains started coming back. I'm not sure it was that great to live around uh, in this house. Um, and it kind of worked out to me, my normal life was structure. And as soon as I started putting some structures to my week again, having a plan or event to really look forward to, uh, life was good again. So that's that's how I balance the two. I think about structure and I think right now it's just a hard thing for anyone to do. Right? You know, you, you're homeschooling kids and you're trying to save your job and all sorts of stress, stresses that are just put on us now just given the last couple of years, right? But I think it's about those small steps uh, and it's about just trying to take back you know, a little bit of control. And I think certainly for me, uh, it has been a challenging thing. And I, I think about, just doing stuff with a bit more intention because uh, I think to me, the digital distractions are a big one. Um, just having your phone there, there's almost this alternate universe. Uh, I did an interview uh, this week for the podcast, um, Wellbeings, if anyone wants to check it out with, with an author by the name of Catherine Price. And she said, on average, people use their phones four hours a day. That's 60 full days a year. 
which when you work that out, the mind numbing scary fact is that's nine months of 40 hour work weeks that were on our phone every single year. It just let that sink in. And so we've got to take back control um, and, and put more intention on the way that we use technology. That's been my uh, really hard hurdle to overcome. And I think there's a lot of young people out there that can relate. You know, I think back to a time before iPhones and I just had less anxiety, less depression, less stress, less worry, less feeling like I had so much to do that I was overwhelmed. Uh, and so I've been trying to look at ways to recalibrate that relationship. And it's super challenging. You know, I, I'll, I'll admit that it's, uh, it's something that's still a real work on. The other thing for me is nature, getting back into mm nature you know you look at the science behind it you know the reason why nature relaxes us is the reoccurring fractal patterns that we see in nature relaxes our nervous system you know so when we're out in nature it feels great and my my mum and I spend a lot of time with my, my folks when I'm not sort of tr stuck in exile but she's got a walking group called the walkie talkies and they go out on the weekend and they have their flat white and they walk around the mountain in Auckland and Mount Albert and, you know, she said it was great. I was able to tell my, the other girls, you know, about the science and it just made it a bit more fun. And I think that's the thing. It's there is work involved, but it doesn't have to be hard. You know, it's it's people get a little bit scared or like, oh, man, I can't I can't change. And as we age, it's a fixed mindset, you know, and it's it's a tough thing to overcome. And I'm speaking from experience, you know. The one thing that someone said to me around wellness is you've just got to be open. You'd be open to new things and trying stuff on, for so, you know, and see how it fits. That's a great place to start. And, you know, a great quote that someone actually said to me yesterday was kind of, you think wellness is expensive, try illness. And it's <laughs> so true. You know, yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not about spending all this money on all these fancy pieces of equipment. It's actually just going to a doctor and, and just understanding your body. And the great thing is far more than when, so you were a kid or even I was a kid. Precision health now is in a space where we can know so much more about our bodies. And for some people, that's scary, but it's just knowing, you know, we know so much more about everything now, you know, just the way that the world has developed. So we can know so much more about our bodies and how to fix them. And it's like things like you can't exercise your way out of a bad diet. You know, what food are you putting in your system? Yeah, the opportunity to get on here and, and talk with you, you know, someone I certainly admire and, and part of a legacy, you know, I think with, with the All Blacks that is not necessarily, it's a global thing, you know, I, I know that you know, but, you know, just in America, it's amazing, you know, Kiwi, All Blacks is the first thing they say, or Lord of the Rings, and it's about how do we get that mindset. Goal setting to me is really, really important to have a focus, to have an end point to have something kind of to work towards and celebrate when you hit that goal, then you've got to be truthful to yourself. And I think that's really important. And other thing I really like, Dom, about goal setting, and we live in this world with amazing people around us that sometimes we don't know their story. Never be afraid to tell people your goals. Wanting to be an all black, that was a great goal of mine that I told lots of people doing an Ironman is an amazing goal that you need to tell people because I think anyway it makes you more accountable but mm. also gives you a bigger support network and, and people come out of the woodwork Dom that really want to help you achieve that goal running your first 5k is an amazing goal for some people to aspire to tell a person next door to you in an office they may have run a marathon before and they can help you on that journey with the hydration mm. with the nutrition with the training plan don't hide behind your goals. So I think goal setting is really important. You know, during this time where I've been isolated a little bit from my training partners who have been really key to me over the years to, to always know a time and a place, going to meet at X time at Y place and we're going to do, you know, Z training. So I knew I had a commitment to those guys. They had a commitment to me and will always be there. But during these last couple of years, I haven't always had that. So how I've overcome that personally uh, once more, just uh, my nature uh, is to physically write it down. Eight thirty in the morning, run. You know, ten o'clock in the you know in the morning, swim. Whatever the case may be, drink three bowls of water a day. Tick, tick, tick. At the end of the day, and it's pretty satisfying when you tick it off. Mm. Uh, don't get too blown away. Of course, if that plan has to change, just adapt. The other thing I think for the All Blacks point of view too, Dom, but once again, my mindset, perseverance is, is really important to all of us. 
don't say in your mind that negative mindset that I can't do it. Uh, it's going to be too hard. It's too overwhelming. It's too massive a hurdle. You know, break all those things down into bite-sized chunks that you know you can do. Be, you know, be positive in your mind. Don't be negative. Don't give it that voice. And man, you will achieve consistency. I think uh, is a given for everything we do. Be consistent with your training. So smaller, easier training than the long kind of big bites that are going to knock us around. And look, the All Blacks do this. Every successful team does this, Dom, and, and you and I do it when we're at the peak of our mental fitness. We love what we do. We enjoy it. We do things with a smile, and that's where the nature thing comes into it. When you go for a walk or a run or get yourself outside, please don't look down on the footpath. Don't look at your shoes. Look up. Look up at the clouds. Look up at the sky. Look at the trees. Look around because once you start connecting with all of those things around you, um, you are connected to that moment and you are living in that moment. Not worrying about all the other things that are going to have to go on in your life at a given point that day. Live in that time. And um, yes. it takes some practice, of course. But please look up and, and don't be afraid ever, if you're tired, fatigued, to touch a tree. It's not airy fairy. You are connected to that nature and, and it will get you uh, home from that run. Interestingly, you know, the science around the mental health benefits, you know, really are staggering. I mean, if, if you do nothing else and it's just getting back into nature, it's just such a great tool, you know, to put in the toolbox. And one of the things that jumped out at me as you were talking was like joy is in the process. You know, a lot of the time we, we set the destinations and that's when we'll have made it when we get to that point. But if you can find a way to joy the journey. Uh, and and you know, the funny thing is, you know, some, sometimes it feels like you can be talking in cliches. You know, I know, I know sometimes I, I feel that I am, but there, there are cliches for a reason because mm. it's so true. And when you're talking about the All Blacks, you know, the word that bump jumps out at me is community. And I think that's the most important thing. And sometimes it can be hard to find um, in New Zealand. Um, sometimes, you know, with, with the, the isolation that comes um, from the last two years, but just in general, you know, we put a lot of pressure under ourselves, uh, on ourselves, and that community is just so important, you know, and whether that community is family and friends and, and people that even that you don't know, like you say, connecting mm. with people, spending as much time during, you know, your life as you can, uh, interacting with other people, but being part of their story and, 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 you know, they can be part of yours and you can be part of theirs. And then the other thing for me is to be compassionate towards yourself, which I think is a big thing that sometimes, uh, not just in New Zealand, but you know, men in general um, can sometimes struggle with. You know, we're, we're so much about having to be supportive for everyone. Everyone needs our support and, and we've got to do it for our family and our friends and our business. But you've got to be compassionate towards yourself and, and, and give yourself some love. And again, like you say, some of the stuff sounds woo-woo, but it's very, it's very basic. It's just, if you... Sometimes if you treated yourself the way that you treat yourself to a best friend, they'd be like, mate, come on, you're not really showing me much love. And interesting with the mind chatter that we all have, you know, we have 60,000 thoughts on average every day. The majority of them are negative and the majority of them are about ourselves. So we're, we're actually talking negatively about ourselves in our head. And it's the start of, of, of a lot of, you know, negative ideation that we all go through. So it's a really good place to start. And the compassion that I show myself is always with the phrase life gets a vote. And if I get up in the morning and I've got a plan to do X, Y, and Z, mm. well, life gets a vote as well. And, and sometimes life just isn't going to let me do that, you know? And so by allowing yourself a little bit of wiggle room to sort of just like, go, okay, you know, maybe tomorrow I'll try and I get it done. It's yeah. Because I think we can, we can end up sometimes just beating ourselves up and then we're in a worse state that, than when we started. And for me, it's like finding those, those things like, like it sounds like exercises for you. Uh, I love breath work and I love getting into an ice bath because let me tell you, you can't be inside your head when you're in a freezing ice bath, you know, like diving into a river down in Queenstown. You know, you, you realize, you know, when you're in that lake, you're like, man, this is cold. You're not ideating and thinking about the emails mm -hmm. that you've got to send and how you haven't talked to that person in a long time and just all these things that, our monkey mind, you know, and, and I think that the distractions for me with my phone and technology 
it's created an ability for me to sit on my laptop while I'm watching TV, eating a sandwich, having a conversation. And I'm doing that a lot more than the 10 minute meditation that I try and do every day. So that's really, I'm in training, but I'm training myself to do a bad habit. And so as much as I can now, I just try and focus on whatever the one thing is I'm focusing on. And let me tell you, that's hard. It's not easy, but um, we've just got to take a bit of control back and do it one small step at a time. And if you can, and you've got a mate out there that you know sort of needs that bit of support right now, mm. uh, you know, there's like you say, there's nothing like having um, some friends and some community around it. And that's one of the things that, you know, just to sort of finish on one of the things for me was, you know, I had the first lockdown in New Zealand before I came back to the States and, I guess living in America or certainly in LA, you know, you get exposed to a lot of these different trends. And so I had friends as, oh, my mate's going through something and he thinks he's going to lose his you know, marriage and oh, my, another friend's going through some, you know, losing their business. And, and, and you sit down with them and you just basically say some of these practices and, and they're like, great. But I think one of the main things they enjoy is just like someone just sitting there talking about it. They'd get into the ice bath and it was very confronting, but then we'd have a beer and, and, they all seem to change. And the big thing was knowing that there was that support there. And a lot of these guys, I didn't even know. So when I came back to the States and got an opportunity to talk to some of these people um, like Wim Hof and ex-Navy SEALs and scientists and authors, um, it's been great to be able to pass that information on because I'm, I'm very much a student and a human guinea pig of sorts. And to be able to pass on science-based learning that people can maybe go, oh, yeah, maybe I'll try that. And then they try it and it adds value. Um, you know, and certainly from the messages I've been getting, whether it be on, you know, the emails or Instagram about, hey, look, I'm 56. I thought my life was done and I've been trying these things and they've been helping. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great thing. And I think Movember is a great thing. And so if nothing else, if this encourages people to, you know, get the talking stick out with their mm. mates and just have a chat and, and, and know that, there are days when you know a legend like yourself has a hard day or a bad day and i'm sure you've got friends as well that have gone through it and you've had to be the strong one and sometimes i've had to be the strong one for you it's just we're all links in a chain and the idea that certainly i think from from an all, all black perspective is people look up to them because they seem so invincible and i think it's a really important message to put out there that hey we're not you know and sometimes even the great ian jones has has a tough day right I think that's one of the things I really want to get through before we finish, Dom. And I know it's been a wonderful chat, but we talk about successful teams and a lot of people out there in big corporations or surrounded by people. And I think it's really important for those people to start to have conversations about who they are, not just, hey, my name's Dominic Bowden or my name's Ian Jones, how are you doing? But successful teams that I've been involved in, our depth of friendship has gone deeper than that know their kids situation, know their upbringing, know their story, their journey to where they are. Why are they in that workplace? Why are they doing what they're doing at the moment? When you know those kind of depths of stories, then you notice things um, that aren't going well or they are going well and you can react to that. I think it's a responsibility of your colleagues, your family, your training partners for me to really notice when, when you are going through a dip or life is pretty good and you can kind of expand on why life's good at that stage. But you don't get to those points for your work colleagues in particular until you have a real close relationship. So I think that's really important. And successful teams, as I pointed out, have been really important to that. And that's one of the things I've missed most during the last 18 months when I've done a lot of training by myself. Not the training, I do the training anyway, uh, but it's that kind of training with people, being surrounded by like-minded people, going to events uh, where you have that nervous buzz before the event or the euphoria after the event. I've really kind of missed that and hankering uh, for that, which is, is something that um, I think for my mental health anyway, or other people's mental health out there is really, really important. So keep having conversations, ask questions with your work colleagues, discuss uh, more than just work matters. And if you see a change in your work colleague, make sure it's you are the one that makes a difference, opens up, uh, talks to them, because what an amazing feeling if you can change someone's life. Because being kind can make a, a heck of a difference. And just very quickly, we we do this, we do a lot of volunteering over here. I, I run a, my family and I run a soup kitchen 
uh, which is amazing. The more you give, of course, Dom, as you know, the more you get back. And it's been an amazing experience for not just my family, which is a very blessed, you know, lucky family to be able to give and share our blessings, but our friends are also in that same situation for them to give to their community. Uh, it's been amazing. So that's a, a also a very strong part of our mental health that we prioritize. Prioritize fitness clearly for me, community, family. And it's not selfish uh, to prioritize yourself. Um, looking after yourself allows you to look after others. So make sure uh, you are number one. Um, I love that, Ian. And as, as I was hearing you talk, I, I when I'm back in New Zealand, I do a lot of stuff with Lifeline. And I heard a, a crazy fact yesterday uh, talking to a buddy in Australia. And he said that they had their most calls ever uh, to Lifeline in Australia in a single day. Mm. So it just shows you what people are going through out there. And I think sometimes it can feel overwhelming. Sometimes it can feel a little, a little grim. You know, we're talking mental health, we're talking suicide. And I think the one thing that I would encourage is that conversations start from a place that is light and it's approachable and it's easy because it's hard sometimes to sit down with mates you've known your whole life and you kind of go mate yeah. you seem a bit down like what's going on rather than finding a way to to to, to say it in a, in a sense that's going to be sort of land land on someone a, a lot easier and certainly that's been something that that i've found anyway is that um it, it can sometimes be overwhelming just given the state of the world right now that having conversations about you know mental health and mindset can be challenging because it's just more like oh, I'm not, not not something else that I've got to sort of put in the in the spotlight but if you can do it in a way that's supportive and encouraging and hey I've been there you know this is something that we're going to get through together and there's something about that shared experience you know I've had bouts of of times when I've been uh depressed and and suffered from just not knowing feeling a bit rudderless and, and you know and not knowing what is the way out uh and so i think the idea that we can all support each other by the fact that hey we've all been there we're all going through it and in some ways we're all on the same train which is different stops and sometimes we go yeah. forward and sometimes we go back and it's 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 this human experience you know and and you know when i hear you talk about connection and i think about the word you know community and i think this last couple of years, it's been so hard as humans. We are, that's what we crave. That's our lifeblood is connection and being with people. Even something as simple as like loneliness and, and the elderly. Uh, a lot of it's because when you touch someone, you get all the pheromones that come off the skin. And a lot of these people in old people's homes, they don't even get any visitors. They, they get no one seeing them and it's, they're so isolated. And I think, you know, that's, that's a huge problem uh, as we, as we get, older and as the, the world grows is how do we stop that isolation and how do we feel more a community and feel supported and so I guess it's about how can we all do it in a small way and whether that's reaching out to your mates or just getting together catching up and just sitting around and just uh, connecting and talking about life and you know goals and dreams and aspirations and what's what's going well and gratitude's been a huge one for me I do a practice every morning with my with my partner and we just really try and focus on three things we're grateful for and we try and go as detailed as possible. So it might be the shrimp and last night's dinner was just perfect, you know, and you can taste it as you say it. And it's, it literally is shown to be the number one form of wellness practices is, is, is to have a practice of gratitude. So nice. it, it is a challenging time, but I think if we can just look at it and go, how do we be optimistic? How do we know that we will get through this and we will get through it together uh, and that's why Movember is just such an amazing month organization and movement. And so, you know, I would encourage the men out there to go to the doctors um, if they haven't been in a while. But I will also encourage conversation and, and of course, support, which, um, you know, just to mention AIA Vitality, I, I think they're an amazing organization because they do want people to improve, live healthier, better, longer lives. So if you are part of um, the Movember movement, and you're giving it a go. Please share your stories on um, um, AIA Vitality New Zealand on Instagram, and um, they'd love to support and really just share uh, the journey as we are all on it together. Um, 
so yeah look a real honor to talk to you ian and um i hope to do it and meet you at, at some point you know in person but yeah. uh the miq has got to play some ball for me uh, at this point but yeah look it's 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 been challenging to be over here but conversations like this you know certainly um bolster me up and and make me excited to get home and spend some time because you certainly miss kiwis when you are away from them i haven't seen a kiwi you know besides my partner in in, in a few weeks so it's uh, it's great to hear your voice mate and uh, thank you for the time thank you very much don one final point i just want to make those the greatest gift we can give any person out there is time we're all busy absolutely understand that but we all have time for the person who most need that and you don't know who that person is so please share your time and that's one of the things i'm really passionate about aia vitality is as you mentioned they wanting people to be better be better physically be better mentally and uh, we are there to help so if anyone wants to reach out personally uh to me tell me your story how maybe i can help just connect with you and we'll share some banter absolutely happy to do that and share our stories and share our direction and share our time with one another because when we share our blessings we, we all uh, benefit so thank you very much for your time Dom you, you're more than welcome when you do finally arrive back in Aotearoa to, to come and visit we'll take you uh, out and about to our nature um, and, mm. and get you recentered to good classic Kiwiana um, and enjoy a Kiwi summer that we're looking forward to so thank you yeah, absolutely. Thank to AIA Vitality. They are doing amazing science-backed uh, research out there. And we are trying to live healthier, longer, better lives. Yeah. Uh, and, and look, I guess, thank you to everyone that's been watching this. You know, we've been talking for quite some time. So if you're still here, we really appreciate yeah. it. And I guess it sort of means that you're on the path. And I think as we go through this reset that I think is going to happen, as we come out of hopefully lockdowns, are we gone for good? You know, you get to sort of ask the question, what do I want to, put in in my focus you know what do I want to focus on and, and what do I want to put intention on and and I just hope that the answer is community and supporting each other um, because now more than ever you know we want to come together as a nation and I think that optimism is a big one for me um, I love New Zealand and you know I second what you say anyone that wants to reach out like I've been overwhelmed by you know people reaching out and it feels so good uh, and anything that I can do to help anyone yeah. out there, um, I'll put my hand up. And yeah, I also want to thank AIA Vitality, uh, certainly a great organization and really practicing what they preach and doing a lot of good stuff. So, you know, I'm stoked to be a part of the family as well, as I know you are. And thank you so much to everyone out there for giving us some of your time. Mm. And yeah, if you're on the Movember path and uh, you're growing or doing your best at growing one of these, good on you because it's a great organization. And uh and it's a great way to get people talking. So thank you so much for, for watching and being a part of this with the two of us. And uh, yeah, let's, let's keep talking.